In this Google Sheets video, I will show you how to make a Google Sheets progress bar that's based on checkboxes. Let's get started. As you can see, I'm in a Google Sheet that is an employee list. It's got information about each of these employees. And here at the right, I would like to set up some checkboxes to help me track their progress toward certification. And there's step one through four in this certification process. But not only do I want checkboxes for each of these steps, but I'd like to see their overall progress reflected here by a bar chart, basically. So let's begin. First thing I want to do is put in some checkboxes. I'm gonna start by clicking on cell G3 and holding the click, and then I'll drag to select step one through four, and then I'll drag all the way down to the last employee. With that range selected, I can go here to the Insert tab, and if you look down here, there's checkbox. By clicking on checkbox, I now have a checkbox in each of those cells. The checkboxes are nice and centered. Everything looks great. I can now click away, and I'm gonna go over here to the progress column, and I'll click on cell K3 in this case. And I'm going to type in a formula here in cell K3. So I'll start my formula with an equal sign. In Google Sheets and also in Excel, that's how you begin typing a formula, with equals. So equals sparkline. I'm gonna use the sparkline function. So I type in sparkline, left parenthesis, and now that I've begun writing my formula, I'm actually, instead of focusing on K3, I'm gonna focus here on the formula bar. So I'm gonna actually click there. So equals sparkline, left parenthesis, and then I want to count how many of these checkboxes in row three have been checked. So there's a nice function to use here, it's count if. So I'm gonna count if, and then I'll put in another left parenthesis. Next, I need to show Google Sheets which cells I care about. And I could do that by typing in their cell references, or I could do it by clicking and dragging to select those specific cells. And that's what I've done here. So let's look back up at my formula in the formula bar. It now says equals sparkline, left parenthesis, count if, and then it shows G3 through J3 because those are the cells I care about in row three. I'll put in a comma, and then I'll type the word true. Now, why true? True just indicates that the checkbox has been checked. I'll put in my right parenthesis, comma, and next, I just need a left curly bracket. Now, on my keyboard, the left curly bracket is found in the upper right corner of the keys of the keyboard. So you'll need to look on your keyboard, see if that's where yours is, but for me, I just hold shift, tap the key that has that left curly bracket on it, and there it is now in my formula. Next, I put in a quotation mark, and I type the function chart type. So two T's in a row, put in my close quote, comma, another quotation mark, bar, and what I'm saying here is that I want the chart type to be bar, a bar chart. Next, I'll put in a semicolon, quotation mark, the function max, close quote, comma, and in my case, the number four. There are four steps in this certification process. Now that I've got the number four in there, I can put in my right curly bracket, and again, for me to do that, I hold shift on the keyboard, and then I tap the key that for me is in the upper right corner of my keyboard. It's the right curly bracket, and then finally, I can put in my right parenthesis. I'll tap enter on the keyboard, and unfortunately, I made a mistake and I get an error message here. Let's look at the mistake. What did I do wrong? If you look in the formula bar, you can see that I misspelled count if. So simple mistake there. I'll just click where I should have put a T in count if. I'll fix my error, tap enter on the keyboard, and look, it's working now. I have a progress bar in column K, at least for row number three, which is Julia. Now, that mistake I made of misspelling the function count if is an excellent example of why the Google Sheets formula bar is useful and powerful. If you use the formula bar, it's easy to go in and fix a mistake like that. You can just select the cell that has the formula in it and go to the formula bar click and find the exact place where the misspelled function is or the error has been typed and you can correct that error. Then just tap enter on the keyboard. So I love that. So now as I check the box for step three, my progress is updated. Step four, it's updated again. If I find out that actually they didn't do steps three and four, it can go back the other direction. So let's look now at James. 
If I check step one for James, step two for James, it's not working for me. Why not? Because this formula that I put in to read the checkboxes for Julia, that's just for Julia. It's only for row number three. So do I need to do that entire process all over again for James, Amelia, Freddie, Jeff? That's going to take me quite a while. Actually, no, I don't have to. All I need to do is go to the cell that has the formula for Julia in this case, so K3, and I'll click on that cell. With the cell selected, notice that the lower right corner of that cell has a little dot there. That is the fill handle, and I can click on that fill handle and drag down to copy the same formula and extend it down the spreadsheet. Now I just undid the fill that I did using the fill handle by clicking and dragging. I've undone that because I want you to see that there's an even faster way to copy and extend a formula down the sheet. I'm going to check some of these boxes just so you can see that the progress bar is not working for the other employees, only for Julia. But with some of these checked now, let's look at what happens if I use this other method for copying and extending this formula. So with cell K3 selected, instead of clicking and dragging this time, I'm going to just double click on the fill handle. I double click there and the formula is copied and really it's, it's extended down the spreadsheet. So let's go down all the way here to carry in row 26 and I'll check the box and look, the progress bar is working great because what happened when I double clicked on this fill handle is it copied the contents of K3 and extended it all the way down the range of data that's on this sheet. So if I click, let's say, on K47, here in the formula bar, you can see that the formula is already there. And the cell references have been updated so that they match this row for Emma instead of still matching Julia. So that's one of the fastest, one of the best ways to create a Google Sheets progress bar that's based on checkboxes. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell so you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member. And you can do that by clicking the button to join the channel that you'll find below this video. You can also click the thanks button below the video. Or you could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. Speaking of supporting my channel, I need to say thank you to my wonderful super techie and ultra techie supporters. Thank you so much for all you do to support my channel. I really appreciate the support. It really does enable me to continue to make these educational videos. Thank you.